Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Uh, so let's have an absolutely uh, great session today. We're going to have we're going to have fun uh, on this this call and, and cover out um, some things that I think are really important. They might be perceived a little bit as some as the foundations of our work. So today is about full superconscious alignment. I want to explain and talk about how the recode works because the recode it's really our uh, lead singer here. It really is the process that. If you were to if you were to consider all the processes, uh, you would you would focus on learning. If you could only focus on one, you would focus on this one, wouldn't you? And so the the the, the real theme for today is to understand is that you are super conscious, but you're also self conscious and unconscious. There's three levels of awareness. There's three levels uh, of consciousness that we use as metaphors to describe this undescribable thing that. Everyone has tried to, or many have tried to describe this undescribable thing that we are, this consciousness masquerading itself as a human body. And so, so we try to use three, many others have used three, but here in Magnetic Mind, uh, what we, we use is, is self-conscious, uh, unconscious, and superconscious. So the, the key with being able to become superconscious is not that it's, that it's something you need to uh, do that you've never done before it's actually creating a working relationship between all three levels of your consciousness and i'd just like you to just write that down is is it's already there sometimes most of the time we do not have a working relationship we can have a very dysfunctional relationship between the three but a lot of times it's not working it's not uh you know we say jump and then it jumps a lot of times each of the levels uh you, you know d don't really understand what the other's doing and this was very true for me very very true and it might be true for a lot of you i was trying to create results now in my life it wasn't that i didn't create any results you know i was i i'd done things however there were certain areas that for me were just a real I guess a real challenge, a real challenge. And it felt like there was just one or two choices or what I called back then goals in my life that it, it seemed the faster that I ran towards it, the faster it ran away. Let me just ask you, if you reflect on your life, is there one or two areas of life that it always seems it's a bit of a battle there, you know, whether it's health or relationships or money or spirituality or connection or having fun in life. Like, it's not like everything. It, there's just one or two. And see, what's happened in that area, it's not any more difficult than other areas. It's just in that area, you don't have a working relationship between, between all levels. So, so for me, this became such an interesting thing because the unconscious takes all instructions that you give it as true. Okay. Whatever, whatever you give it, it, it says that's true. So the unconscious has no discernment. It doesn't discern whether something is right or wrong. It just takes the instruction. Okay. And so as children, we, we just took the instruction and internalized it. And that became the way that we are, but we still do this. The unconscious doesn't, uh, doesn't have discernment. So when you pick yourself up and you walk yourself into a personal development conference to, or you go to a therapist or you go to read a book, if there's a part of you that is trying to fix yourself, the unconscious instruction that you're giving it is that there's something that needs to be fixed. Now, just, just riddle me this. If, if something needs to be fixed, then it must be what? It must be what? If it needs to be fixed, what must it be? If, if something needs to be improved, then it's not good enough, you see? And, and so, and that's this, we, we call these silent instructions. If you, if you sit there saying, if only I have uh, more money, then finally I will be able to be happy. 
The silent instruction is that money is more powerful than you. You see? It, 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 all of these, when we, we wish or, or we dream or we hope for something, there's a silent instruction with it. So someone that's going, oh, if I could just be in love, if I could just find someone I love, if I could just have this amazing body, the silent instruction that we're giving is that that thing has the ability to make us happy or sad. And if it has the ability to make us happy or sad, it get, we give it the power. And, and what we don't realize is that each level of our consciousness communicates and wants different things. So I want to expand on this and, and help you all really understand this so that you, you get it. Because most of the time, our self-conscious and unconscious and superconscious are all on different pages. Sometimes they're not even in the same book. They do not have a functional working relationship. Does that make sense? Like one part of you saying, I'd really like to have a healthy body. The other part of you is saying, let's go eat some more Doritos and sit on the couch. And the other part's in there going, well, whatever we want to experience, it's fine. <laughs> and, and so what we want to have is full alignment with an end result. You know, full alignment with an end result that, that allows us to have it and to be it and, and to get there. So let's let's talk about this today. So what is what is the job of the self-conscious? Where are some of my coaches on here? What if you were to define the role of your self-conscious? Some might call this ego, your thinking brain. What would you what would you say some of its its roles are? Making decisions, making choices, yeah, being logical. The self-conscious, uh, David says, being annoying. What part of you is saying it's annoying? The self-conscious judges itself. It's really quite, uh, quite funny. So the, the self-conscious, it has a life. It makes choices. See, the self-conscious really wants and believes in this thing called the good life. Does that make sense? The good life. So the self-conscious has this way it should be. There's a good life. There's something you're, you're wanting to like. It, it really believes in a life and a good life. And it's aiming for good. It's aiming for better. That's what it's going for. Does that make sense? So it, the, the self-conscious sees things in polarity. It sees things as good and as bad. Self-conscious sees polarity and it wants good. Make sense? Then there's the unconscious. So the unconscious, if you want to call it the subconscious, that's fine. Here in MagMind, we call it unconscious. It doesn't matter what word you use, but we're going to use unconscious. Unconscious is, is running the, the body. Okay, so if the self-conscious is focused on a life and there's good and there's bad, the unconscious has a body. And the body is what it wants to keep alive. And one of its basic principles is whatever has been done in the past we survived. Therefore, let's just repeat that. So the unconscious doesn't really care about a good life. It just wants longevity of the body. Okay, so whatever has been in the past, it just wants to put in the future. So whatever, whatever weight, whatever love allowed, whatever feelings allowed, whatever um, health is allowed, uh, whatever freedom is allowed, whatever choices are allowed, it just wants to keep putting that in the future. And, and it's, it's, it's way of, uh, I guess, arriving at that is that well that that's what it's already survived so it knows that so it's it's a real critter brain you know it's part of your limbic system and critter brain or reptilian brain and it wants survivability does that make sense it wants survivability and we know about this part it's very interesting you can walk yourself into a cinema you can be watching a, a movie up on the screen and you can jump and you go i know that i'm sitting i know that's a screen you know, I know this is not real, but my unconscious doesn't know. The unconscious takes everything as true. Does that make sense? Everything is true. It just, it just takes it. It has no discernment. And so what's really fascinating is that, th that these two, they, they don't really communicate in a correct way. And today I'm going to show you how to make the shift because the unconscious says, oh, I'd really like to have, uh, you know, a, a different body shape. I'd really like that. And the unconscious hears, Right now, the body shape is no good. I'm bad. Need to fix. The, the self-conscious goes, oh, I'd love to go to a personal development seminar. That seems good. The unconscious hears, we're not right. We need to fix. We're broken. 
And then all it does is it keeps on re repeating that. Does that make sense? So, so the unconscious and the self-conscious, they, really they really don't understand each other. You see, they're after different things in life and they actually communicate very differently, okay? Very differently. And it does, it creates a lot of oscillation. Then we have the superconscious, right? And the superconscious, you can call it, uh, um, I guess you, you could call it infinite knowledge. You can call it source if you want to. I call it superconscious. It's our highest level of consciousness. It's where genius ideas come from. It's where Formula One racing cars are driving from. You know, they're driving, they're going way too far. They're in a different, it's when you're in flow, you're in the zone, you're in superconscious. It's it's a code of infinite self. It, it cannot feel. And, and it, it's, it's, it just knows that you're not really a body. It knows there's no such thing as a good or a bad life. You see that? So the superconscious knows that what the self-conscious is up to, there's good and bad. That ain't right. It's just, it's just an is. There is no, you know, the, the superconscious sits there and goes, hmm, the person who has cancer and the doctor that cures cancer, they're the same. They're both needed for that experience. The self-conscious says, well, the person with ha has cancer, that's bad. And then the doctor that cures it, good, you see? And, and so, but the, the, the superconscious, it just, it just is, it knows that you have this experience and it's an energy source. It's so much bigger. So when, when we tune into superconscious, we have the flexibility to shift and change things. And, and so what happens a lot of times and what, what we teach you to be able to do is we show you how to have the self-conscious choose where you want to go, teach the unconscious that it's safe. And then have the superconscious help you make up how you're going to get there. Your self-conscious chooses. We use emotion to teach the unconscious. And then the superconscious makes up how we get there. That's what should happen. That's what should happen. But typically, what most happens with most people is that the self-conscious chooses. This is what we want. It teaches the unconscious that it's bad. And so then the unconscious is trying to stay being bad, stay being not enough. And then this, the, the self-conscious is trying to take us somewhere else. And so sometimes we move towards what the self-conscious want, and then we move back to what the unconscious want. And for most people, the, uh, the superconscious is just sitting in the grandstand watching this, uh, this, this person in the middle with two rubber bands tied around themselves. You imagine they're like a basketball gym. And there's a uh, there's the, the unconscious on one wall and it's like bolted into this uh, big bungee cord. And then on the other wall is, is the is the self-conscious and there's a bungee cord. The person runs towards a good life and then gets pulled back to safety, then runs towards a good life and then gets pulled back to safety and does that. And so it's very it's very interesting and, and, uh, and, and fun to look at. OK. When you're, when you're living super conscious, what we're actually uh, establishing is that you have a working relationship between all levels of consciousness. Does that make that's what it works? Like the self-conscious is honored and gets to choose where you're going. The unconscious understands that it's safe. And the super conscious gets to engage and make up creative ways to get there. And it's interesting is that all inventions come from superconscious, including the computer that I'm talking on, the camera. It's all been invented. And, and invention is, is in the superconscious, these ideas that come out of nowhere. You get to invent how you get there. And it's, uh, it's really fun for us to, to understand and engage in this. Okay. So the... The idea is that you must learn to shift into a creative structure, okay? A creative structure is not the opposite of a problem-solving structure, okay? They're just completely different, completely different. A superconscious structure is one where you are focused on bringing something into being. This is the creative structure, okay? So I want you to imagine the creative structure is where you start with a complete blank canvas 
and you're bringing something to exist. Does that make sense? You're bringing something out of nothing to exist. Everything else focuses on what is already there and trying to fix it. When you're focusing on what is already there and trying to change it or fix it or improve it, the thing that you're trying to fix or improve or change has to exist. Just really get this. In order for, for you to be able to fix it, it has to exist. So you have to first create the thing existing in the way you don't want it and then try to fix it because you can't fix or improve something that doesn't exist. But when you create, you start with nothing and you get to turn it into what you want it to be. So, so problem solving is what we see in, in most of the world. You know, problem solving is therapy. Therapy, problem solving and therapy says, this is how you are and it needs to be different. Problem solving is healing. This is the problem. This is the diagnosis and we need to heal it. You see, problem solving is I need to be positive. I'm not positive enough and I need to be positive. Problem solving is the problem. <laughs> if I just had more money, if I just meditated different, if I just became a vegan, if I just did this, if I just had this, all of that focuses on what is already there. Now, if you realize that you're consciousness creating, if you realize that you are consciousness creating and you just focus on creating a healthy body, that is where 100% of your energy goes. That's the creative structure. If you first have to acknowledge that you've got an unhealthy body and then you need to fix it, you've already created a second thing. So already it's 50% on what you want. Do you see that? Even just mathematically, you haven't got all your energy on what you want. But as soon as you get into the problem structure, you hold these two things there. The self-conscious loves the problem structure because the self-conscious lives in polarity. It says that there is a, a dark and a light, a good and a bad. So there's polarity. And just to trick our brains, I'm going to put bad on this side and uh, good on this side. You see that? There is a, a good and a bad. And, and that's where it comes from. So if you try to create in this is bad and this is good, in this time down situation, you end up just swinging on a pendulum. And I normally put the pendulum from this point to here, to here. And the way to think about this is that in, in the third density or the third dimension, have you ever noticed that everything always wants to change what it is? So if something is, so I've got a coffee in front of me, and since I'm talking, this hot coffee is slowly getting colder. Okay. Now, if I've made this an iced coffee, and put uh, ice in it, it would be slowly getting warmer and melting. So what happens in this reality is everything always comes back to the middle. You see that? It always, it never stays on the extreme. It always comes back to the middle. So how many, how many of you have already felt like a, a life that always just ends up at room temperature? <laughs> no matter how much you try to force it, it just ends up at, you know, room temperature, right back where you started. Never less than, never more than, for very long, just comes back. It's just, it doesn't work. So, so the self-conscious isn't very good at creating because what it has to do is it says, this is bad, this is good. So it doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense. Now that balance point, that room temperature, that balance point here is always on every pendulum, the balance point is always where the fulcrum is. If you have a swing and you're pushing a kid on a swing, it goes forward and back and it ends up in the middle, doesn't it? You guys know that. You, you hold something, it always ends up in the middle. That balance point here, okay, this is your unconscious. 
So whatever your unconscious believes is safe, that's where you end up. If your unconscious believes that a certain amount of money is safe, that's where you end up. If your unconscious believes a certain amount of body weight is safe, that's where it ends up. And what do I mean by safe? I mean that it already survived it. Does that make sense? Already survived it. So what do we need to do? Well, Chris, obviously we need to shift the fulcrum. The problem is, is if this is the unconscious, unconscious, and if this is the self-conscious, and the unconscious is always seeking balance, and balance is what you manifest in your life. If you then give the unconscious an instruction that we need to change its fulcrum, what is the silent instruction it gets? We say your where your balance point is is wrong. What is that? It's a problem. And so it exists. And so if it exists and it's wrong, the unconscious is going to look for ways that it's broken and keep making up ways that it's broken for all eternity. This is why healing doesn't work. See, healing doesn't work. Creating works. Creating works. When you create a new body, the healing is no longer a problem because you created a new body. When you create total abundance, not having enough money is not a problem. When you create a dream home or a dream relationship, the problem's not there, you see? But as soon as you focus on the problem, it has to exist, okay? And this is basics, but I tell you what, it's very easy to talk about and it's much, much, much more difficult to live it, isn't it? Much more to take your focus like a, an X-ray sort of beam, take it off, the current reality completely and only focus on what you're creating is absolutely difficult, isn't it? How many of us get drawn into how it's not enough, not good enough, not this, da, 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 and we keep on focusing on the current, like we keep getting pulled back to it. Isn't it just difficult? So let's just acknowledge it's important to keep establishing the realization that you live in the creation you live in the creation and what we must do is we must teach the unconscious the new balance point how do we do that how would we teach the unconscious its new point of safety or balance well if we understand that the unconscious wants to repeat what is survivable. Wouldn't it make sense that we must teach the unconscious that it's survivable? And if we taught it it was survivable and that it was, it was good and nothing went wrong, wouldn't the unconscious then just do what it did to create the first set point? Because, I mean, who created that to begin with? So how do we do that? Well, what's fascinating is that the unconscious doesn't really know whether the mental image, sound, the, the mental sensory picture, it actually happened outside of your body or not. And the reason is, is because when you touch something with your fingers, see something with your eyes, hear something with your ears, Taste something. When you experience something, it creates that inside of you, that image, that sound, that experience inside. Is this true? Yes, it's true. This is what happens. All of us know we can close our eyes, we can have a nightmare, and our unconscious can sweat and react like it's real. Are there any other men out there that have had to wake up and their wife or girlfriend has had a bad dream about them last night and they're in trouble for the whole day. Does this just happen to me when I'm in trouble because of her dream when I was bad at it? Is this just happen? Is it only me? <laughs> it wasn't me. 
You were, you were mean to me in my dream. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> have I just got myself in trouble? I don't think my wife's on today. <laughs> I haven't heard anything yet. So, we know that we can close our eyes and we can have a sexual fantasy. We know that we can close our eyes. We can, um, we can remember a time and we can get embarrassed about it right now. Uh, we know that can happen. Okay. And, and so here's what we know. We can teach our unconscious a new set point. Does that make sense? We can teach our unconscious a new set point, a new, a new point of safety. But we don't do it by trying to fix it. We just teach it a new set point, okay? Very important to understand that you teach it. How do you teach it? By creating the sensory experience inside of your brain, experiencing it fully enough times that your unconscious goes, that is safe. Can I just ask, how many of you would prefer that your unconscious believed it to be more safe to have millions and millions and millions and millions more dollars than you need to spend? How many of you would like it to be more safe to have more love than less love? How many of you would like it to be more safe to, be, uh, to have more of a following than less of a following? See, what you have in your life is just a direct reflection on what your unconscious belief is safe. And sometimes, you know, I was working with someone just recently and they weren't able to achieve what they wanted to achieve because their unconscious had coded up that if they create a bigger experience than their father, if they were bigger than their father, it was bad. And they had an unconscious set point that said only get to a size that's just less than him because it's bad to outshine him. And, and he didn't, he wasn't even alive anymore. And, and so the, the unconscious set point just needed to move. So, so we do this and we create this focus between the two. Then we have one, one space above. See, this is where we change the set point up here. And this is the super conscious, super. See, the superconscious, you can go into any, any different reality. You can become that reality here. You can live it so that it becomes the new set point. This new set point brings down to a new fulcrum, and now you live here. You see that? You guys could all take a screenshot of this, and you know exactly what I've just talked about. But if I said this to anyone else, I'd go, what the heck is that scribble? <laughs> You guys know exactly what I talk about. You move into this new, you move into this new moment up here at the superconscious. And so this is where imagination becomes the most powerful creative force on the planet. Imagination becomes the most powerful creative force on the planet. In fact, to the alchemist, imagination uh, was known as the secret fire to be able to invent or imagine your future visualization for all those teachers who told you you got your head in the clouds well good it's about going into that new invention inventing a new body inventing uh you know a new a new way that you are going to be holding it true long enough that your unconscious grasps onto that and then bringing that down and experiencing it That's how you create a working relationship. The self-conscious chooses, the unconscious, the superconscious makes it up, and the unconscious uh, lets you know that it's safe to have it. So you self-conscious chooses, unconscious know, lets you know it's safe to have it, superconscious makes it up to get there. Who's enjoying just refocusing on some of these, these very, very key points? Good. I hope so. Because there's, there's one thing that we do to speed all of this up. And that is, we can teach the superconscious and unconscious to work together. You do not need to sit in an hour and a half of meditation or go to years and years and years and years and years of things. Instead, we can actually teach the unconscious and superconscious to do this for you. And we do it through metaphor. We do it through a very succinct and focused metaphor that allows you to make this shift fast. 
That is why Recode is the most powerful transformational thing on the planet. Okay, so we have our five steps. What's step number one? First step is to choose. We choose what, what it is that we want to create. What's step number two? Notice where we are now. What's step number three? Get into the emotion of it. This starts to teach the unconscious. Now, the, the problem then arises is that even though we're in it, our unconscious has so many patterns that says that that isn't allowed. Just because you close your eyes once and imagine yourself to have a healthy, amazing body with a dream relationship, just because you do it once isn't enough for the unconscious to just believe you. Does that make sense? It's, it, it's not how it works. However, what we can do with Recode is we can teach the unconscious and superconscious to work together with your self-conscious. And we do that through some absolutely amazing metaphors that allows every aspect of you to get it. So here's the truth. Every single one of us knows we can forget things, yes? You've all forgotten someone's name that you know, forgotten where the car keys were. Yeah, I believe that most of us have forgotten more things than we know. True? So we all know how to forget. Because we know how to forget, we're not broken. Because we know that we have the ability to forget, we have the ability to forget anxiety, to forget limitation, to forget the old set points. Can I just get a yes into the chat box if you know that you have the ability to forget? So because we have the ability to forget, all we need to do then is to teach our unconscious and superconscious what are the things that we would like to forget. I would like to forget many limitations. And so some of the metaphors that we use is the football field metaphor. See, we, we explain to the, to the superconscious that as we're going towards a goal at the end of the football field, it, it, it's, we can't get there because it's as though little gophers, those little furry cute animals have popped out and led mounds of dirt all over the field and we simply can't get there. So superconscious, do you see all of this? All we want you to do is then to, to grab a feather very gently and sweep, a, sweep all of that dirt, flatten it out, so then we can walk to what it is we want to get to. You see, it, it's, it's like at the end of the river, let's call the river the river of desire. It leads to a land, and, and maybe that land is called the land of plenty. And we're trying to get to that river, but we can't get there because for, for some reason we were having fun and, and we created ourselves a dam and we built up a dam. You know how kids just build up a dam? They just like to, to just dam up some water for no reason. It's just a fun thing to do. Well, sometimes we've done that to the water and we're not flowing. We'd like to get there, but we're in the current reality, the current stream trying to get there. And there's a dam in the way. And we just need to remember as a child, we built this dam and now we'd actually like the, the water to flow to, to everything that we want. And so we just need to remember all the stones and sticks and things we put there and, and quietly just put them back so then we can flow. So we can use metaphor to explain how this, this can work because uh, we, we know these things. Like we've all heard the story of the baby elephant that was tied to a, uh, to a, a stake in the ground with a really small rope and it pulled and pulled and pulled as a baby elephant. And now as a big, strong elephant, you can take a little shoe, piece of shoe, shoelaces, a bit of string, and you can tie this elephant up, this big, strong, amazing elephant, and it won't even pull because just learn to not pull. But the truth is, is what it can do now has nothing to do with what it could do then. And we, we can help the superconscious and unconscious understand that, that as soon as it sees resistance, that which is opposing what it is we want to create, it's like opening the blinds of, of uh, and letting the light shine in on a vampire. And as soon as the light is on, as soon as the light sees it, it the vampire just is va vanished. It's just gone. That's what it's like. That's what it's like. And, and so we, we can teach, we can teach it how to go. And then, then what we can do is we can realize that when we do recode, we, we do step one, we choose. Step two, we, we notice where we are now, create that tension between the two points. We then feel it, we go there. 
as soon as you go into the end result, your unconscious will tell you all the reasons why this new set point here is not safe. This is safe. And you go into this new experience, it will push up into your experience all the stories, reasons, traumas, beliefs, broken promises, family entanglements, part-time personalities. It will push it all up. Because the unconscious doesn't know whether you're actually experiencing that now. So you close your eyes and you imagine yourself stepping out in front of an audience filled of 10,000 people. Your unconscious will think you are doing that. Does that make sense? You might even start sweating. Your heart rate might change. And so as you do that, then it pops up, just like those little gophers popped up. And all we do is we then one by one in the perfect way, the perfect order, we smooth it all out. And so to the unconscious, we're actually creating a new reality because it didn't realize, it doesn't understand whether or not it's outside of you or inside of you. And then as we, as these pop up, we then, we get rid of one and we get rid of one and we get rid of one and slowly we can start shifting to this is our new set point and every aspect of us is completely happy. Does that make sense? So, so that's how Recode works. That's how this works. It works by you becoming powerful. Now, a couple other things is the reason why it's nice to have someone else take you through Recode. First, first off, before I go into that, can everyone get that when we say the word superconscious, we're not talking about a God. We're talking about the part of you that's creative. Does that make sense? We're talking about the part of you that, that sits with a blank piece of paper and creates artwork or writes a poem or creates a beautiful night out. The part of you when you're talking with someone, something pops in and you start talking. The part of all of the artists who created amazing music, we're talking about the part of you that creates, turns some, into something from nothing. Does that make sense? That's the because we want, we're talking about being creative. Superconscious is creative. Okay. And so the reason why it's nice to do recode uh, with someone else is because then you don't have to try to focus on more than one thing. You don't have to try to acknowledge what's in the way and remember the commands. Does that make sense? You don't have to try to remember the commands and do the, do the shift work. And so what's, what's, what's amazing is that when people set the intention to, to allow their superconscious to open to others, and especially if they set that intention to one person in particular, like the person leading the, the session, when they set that intention to open that, when you're leading a session, it just becomes obvious what commands need to be said. And usually there's only about 12 or 13 that are really specific. In the certification, we cover 10 main categories. And all we do is on this side of it is we notice what's there and say, hey, let's, let's um, smooth this one over. Let's pull this boulder out. This is the right order. Does that make sense? That's all we do on this side. We use muscle testing and a few other things to really get that. Okay. And we allow it. See, making change is not scary. Because when you're choosing to create a new reality, it's, it's you're actually just pruning away that which doesn't, which only leaves the beautiful diamond of the creation. So you just focus on it and you allow it. You just allow it. Does this make sense? That's how Recode works. And there's five steps to it. And today I felt called to just revisit and spend a bit of time just having everyone remember, you are a creative energy creating a future. And you the one that keeps creating your own limitation. Does that make sense? You are the one that keeps on recreating the same limitation or creating a different limitation. Thanks, Nan. Appreciate it. 
It's you. So whatever you have in your life, you want to go, okay, my unconscious believes that safe. Nothing wrong with that. I'm going to first, step one, choose. I'm going to choose for no reason. I'm going to choose a healthy body. I'm going to choose to have financial abundance. I'm going to choose. Then I'm going to completely engage, going to close my eyes. I'm going to engage in it. I'm going to make it up in my mind and I'm going to teach my unconscious that it's safe. Does that make sense? I'm going to teach it that it's safe. Then I'm going to acknowledge where I am now. I'm going to acknowledge I'm on this side of the football field and I, that's the, the field I want to go to. Then I'm going to notice all the gophers that pop up. And then I'm going to say, see, super conscious, this is what's stopping us being that right now. Stopping us having that right now. So let's just recode that and that and treat that down and treat that down. And I'm going to start running across this field and treat that and treat that and treat that and treat that because the last step is action. Hey, Chris here again. I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, it was streamed live to our Magnet Mind Masterclass uh, coaching program. If you'd like to be involved in that program, please do reach out. Uh, we do have spaces you can uh, apply for and you can join. So do let us know if it's something for you. And again, thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like, and share this content so we can reach millions of people just like you and help them become conscious creators. Have a great day. Stay super conscious.
questions are simply that.